All right, so today is an exciting day because we're starting to look at what we're gonna do for fencing for our goats. Uh, we've been talking to a goat breeder and she has goats and alpaca and sheep and all that. And uh, so the next thing we need to do is get our, get our shit together and uh, get our fence built, get our pins starting to be set up. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do. So today we're coming out here to do some measurements and see what we're gonna need to do to build the pins that we want. You know, and also explore our options of what we possibly could do because there's, there's a lot of land here and we have some fencing that, that came from free from the landlord. And uh, yeah, so we're coming out here to do some measurements. I might draw a 3D model and kind of plot where things are gonna go. But uh, this is an exciting day for us. It's also first day it hasn't rained in like two weeks, which is amazing for LA. So anyhow, I'm excited. Are you excited? excited. All right, let's go do some measurements. The goal here was to get detailed measurements of the existing poles as well as a rough idea of where we think the new poles are going to go. Once I had this info, I used my drone to take a series of images that I could then use to not only generate a topographic map, but also convert it into a 3D model. Once I had that model, I was able to bring that model into SolidWorks. For those of you not familiar with SolidWorks, it is a 3D CAD or computer-aided design software that is typically used for design and engineering work. Once I had the model in SolidWorks, I had to create all of the fence parts from scratch. I then was able to place these newly created 3D fence components onto my model of the yard. Once I completed the virtual fence, I was able to create what is known as a bomb or bill of materials that I used to order parts from the fence company. We did a lot of research about how to build a sturdy goat fence. They say if it won't hold water, then it won't hold a goat. Obviously this is not true, but it's trying to get the point across that goats tend to be escape artists. Since our pasture is right next to a coyote den, we didn't want to take any chances, which is why you might have noticed that the fence design is probably a bit overkill. We were originally thinking that the very top of the pad would make a great pasture, but we decided that the pad below it was not only larger but had a lot of great shade trees and would be more fun for the goats with all the slopes. Before we started building, we needed to level off the top pasture in preparation to move all of our trees yet again, as well as the rest of our junk. This of course was a lot of fun and our friend wanted to come over and help out as well. Two weeks later. Today's exciting because we're actually finally starting the fence here. Now the thing is, I spent the last couple of weeks kind of getting ready for this 3D flyovers, pictures, and catting. So now I got this very awesome drawing. I couldn't really sleep well last night, so I ended up uh, generating this at about, I don't know, 6 a.m. this morning. And it shows the overlay of our property with all the posts, which posts go where, where sleeves go, and all these detailed measurements. Vince company kind of screwed me, maybe not, I don't know. I think we've got people coming tomorrow. I tried to place the order on Monday, today's Friday. Still haven't received any quotes or anything. Still waiting on that. We're gonna try to pour uh, post today, assuming we can go pick stuff up and get concrete. So if we can do that, then uh, we'll have some work to do for our helpers this weekend. First, we're gonna start by laying down a string and using these measurements that uh, off the drawings, mark the spots, and we'll come back later with the post hole driller and drill the holes. So here we go.
make some holes. Super fun. Colleen was a bitch. I got shit done. So just to touch on that briefly is we ordered this online yesterday and this morning it said it was ready for curbside pickup and we got here they were super upset at us that we had put concrete on a curbside pickup order and that somebody at Home Depot had marked it ready for pickup so they told us to come back next week Colleen kind of had to you know get in their face about it and we're like no we're, we're here now and so finally they agreed to get it to us they said it'd take about an hour or two but luckily it only took about 20 minutes and we were on our way. But maybe they'll remember us and the fact we tipped. Maybe. But during COVID, it's a great idea to tip because these people are definitely working very hard. Okay, we're, uh, we're finally at the Finn's place. So this has been an experience. Placed the order on Monday. They didn't really do anything until I called them. Called them like three times during the week and they kept putting me off. And then this morning, I finally got a hold of the lady that was helping me. And after two more calls for the day, she finally pushed my order through and now we're here. Uh, it's 3.40, trying to pick it up. We've been here for probably 20 or 30 minutes. And because of the whole COVID thing, they sent a credit card authorization form on a paper out to me. Somebody walked it out to me and then I wrote everything down and then you text it back to them. First of all, the bummer is that it's five grand. The second bummer is that they don't allow you to return stock. And since this is our first time doing this, we don't know what the hell we're doing, to be frank with you. I mean, like, we got a pretty good idea of what we need and what to do, but this is still gonna be a new experience for us. So with that being said, they said they wouldn't let me return stuff without having an account. So I found somebody who had an account, asked them to put that on the order, and the girl was not happy because she has to redo the whole order again. Because I put, it's like, well, then let me just return the items, and then you don't have to retype it, but she insisted that she had to redo the order. So now we're sitting here, waiting for them to redo the order. We've got our concrete from Home Depot. Now we're just waiting on our fencing stuff, and I'm sure I forgot critical pieces, but uh, I tried to be thorough. We'll see what happens here. Hopefully we'll have fencing stuff for this weekend's build, so yay! yay. Looks like a lot of work to me. A lot of farm choring.
All right, so we have water and power here. Two things that normally don't mix, but we need them here at the concrete. We borrowed this thing. I did some work on it to, you know, kind of refresh this, greased all the bearings. So that's great. So we're going to test it. We'll start small with one bag and we'll add two bags and see how we feel about that. This is also the first pull. First pull, number one. Well, that's going to wrap part one of building our goat fence. If you're not already subscribed, please consider it. It really helps the channel. And thanks again for watching. So, future Bob, I don't know if you could see quite a lovely shade of peach that's not entirely natural. A little, a little crispy. A little crispy. You, on the other hand, are perfect golden brown. Very frustrating. I can't believe you just tan. I... <sighs> yeah, yeah, feel sympathy? Yeah.